Yes. Well, hello there, everyone. Uh, this is David Ellis, and I have with me Sandrine Marois, and uh, we are running today our Po Artmo show. We haven't had one in a while, so uh, welcome everyone that's actually getting to see this. Uh, I assume you're going to be watching this on YouTube after we finished. Uh, basically, we're here for a very special um, edition of our show because we're actually releasing issue two of Aurora's and Brossom's uh, Creative Literary Journal. Uh, basically, we had the uh, Aurora's and Brossom's Poetry Journal that we originally launched uh, ages ago, and we had a Creative Arts Journal, and then those two had a baby together, and we merged them together. And now uh, we, we are very happy to uh, say that we've actually released the second issue of the Creative Literary Journal. We've got uh, several other issues uh, in the pipeline, you know, so we're really, really excited about that. And uh, that's the reason for the show uh, today, really, is that's the main uh, reason for the, for the show. We also have multiple um, uh, anthologies to, you can submit to. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, submission calls for people to, uh, to go for. Uh, we also have books of ours that we've released. And we also have uh, yet another uh, writing form that uh, Sandrine herself actually created. Uh, so we now have uh, multiple poetry and vis uh, multiple poetry forms, uh, and some of those are visual poetry uh, forms. Uh, one of which uh, we created is actually just uh, a found poetry form, which is interesting as well because that's my, my specialization. Uh, but Sandrine's uh, new form is uh, not anything to do with poetry, it's actually a short story flash fiction writing form that borrows elements of poetry, so it's more kind of poetic prose. Uh, kind of deal. So uh, that's another wonderful thing that we're sort of focusing on as well. And we're probably going to uh, look at creating a book uh, with all of our forms in the future so you can all learn those different forms. But in the meantime, we've got those forms available uh, for it to you to look at uh, into further detail on our website. And we also have, like I say, the, the new issue that has come out that is available now. Uh, it's at major uh, online bookstores. Uh, the link is in uh, our store uh, on our website. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason why we're here today. And uh, we just really want to sort of go over a few sort of uh, rules and regulations uh, with our magazine and anthology and sort of stuff to um, keep people updated really on why we charge fees, because uh, we have very good reason for why we charge our very, very small fees. And, um, yeah, just really update you all as to uh, where, where we're going with the roars and blossoms at the moment. Okay. So, hello everyone. Very excited to release uh, issue two. And I love when you say, you know, the first, second journals had a baby, <laughs> <It> became <laughs> this one. Uh, so, this issue two has a lot of great content uh, 25 pieces from inspirational artists from around the world and, and really from around the world. Um, so I'm going to show you the names of the artists that we are featuring. Um, a lot of poetry, of course, because uh, we started as a poetry journal. So we've had, uh, we've received a lot of poetry and we continue receiving a lot of fantastic poetry. So um, the choice is getting harder and harder for us. <laughs> um, so we continue with the names here and... Um, yeah, so poetry is a starter. Uh, then we have some short stories for you. Uh, excellent, excellent work uh, from these two artists, these two authors. Uh, then we have a fantastic uh, flash fiction piece. Um, and actually, this uh, this author, Nankuleko Nksmalo, I hope I pronounced it right. Uh, we actually interviewed her on our blog. So if you want to check it out, out. It's it's a great uh, it's a great interview. Uh, very young 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 author, but very very talented. Um, and finally, we have some fantastic photography in in the magazine as well. So uh, that's it. It's 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 exciting. It's exciting because when we read the, each piece separately, we're like, oh, this is great. But when we put them all together, oh my God, <laughs> everything gelled so, so well. So it's, it's, it's exciting uh, to, uh, to be able to see everything together. Uh, so you can grab your copy um, at the link here that you can see on the screen. Um, so it's pretty much available everywhere. Uh, we had an issue to 
um, to distribute to Amazon. Uh, we explain the reason why on our blog, on our announcement today on the blog, so you can go and read about that. We apologize about this problem. There's nothing really we can do about it. It's, you know, nothing we could have done about it, unfortunately. But, you know, the issue two is available pretty much everywhere else. So, it doesn't change much uh, because a lot of people actually uh, purchase our issues from other platforms and not really from Amazon. So that's why we're not too, uh, <laughs> too bummed about it because there still are other options. Um, which brings um, me to remind our paying contributors to the issue to email us uh, to get a complimentary copy. We ask that you email us so that we know that it's still the right email address that you, we can send you the uh, the copy to. Because in the past, you know, we just send the copies to contributors and many of them never got back to us and we received error messages and it, it was very, very, uh, a lot of a lot of work. Uh, and, and, and some people never got back to us. So that's why we need a real email address so we can we can email uh, the issue to you. And just to uh, let our viewers know that when they do submit to us, I mean, the issue that was created with Amazon was that someone had taken parts of their story and then put it into the submission they sent to us. So it's no good. You can't really rename something if you've published it somewhere else. It doesn't matter whether it's on your blog, whether it's on a Facebook post, whether it's somewhere. Just try and make sure if you're going to submit anything to us or to any uh, literary magazine in general, make sure you delete uh, what you've published previously. And because these things can be archived, there's still always a chance that, that there could be some ancient archive website that will actually uh, bring it up uh, in search engines and search histories. And it's not so much the titles that you could try changing, but there will be pieces uh, of literature, you know, in, within, inside a poem or a story that will be flagged by Amazon as uh, content that is already av easily available. And uh, that is what sort of stopped uh, you know, us from actually distributing on Amazon uh, for that issue. So I just I implore people, if you're going to uh, submit to anywhere, whether it be us or any kind of literary journal, make sure that there isn't any kind of uh, any lingering trace of the, your story or your poem on your mm -hmm. blog. You know, delete it off your blog, make a copy of it, and then, and then delete it. Just don't allow it to be searchable on the internet because you will fall foul of this problem in the future if you are creating, if either you are creating journals or you're submitting to journals. They may have, they may have to just reject you outright because they, um, you know, the, the problem has been created and therefore um, we can't, they can't actually release their journal because uh, um, they can't publish it because, because of that problem. So, so we implore you don't um, submit something um, you know, try to write fresh things for journals and then submit them and make sure they're unpublished, yeah. completely unpublished. It doesn't matter where it is, it doesn't matter how big or small the publisher is, whether it's a tiny little website yeah. or a big other journal elsewhere. Uh, you know, please don't uh, mm -hmm. submit content unless, of course, you own the content and you're allowed to republish it. You know, if, if you're if you're submitting something that was published years ago, sort of somewhere, uh, you know, places will accept uh, things that might have been published by a previous journal. Or something but that's that's about the only kind of exception i believe to that rule yeah um and we couldn't remove the piece because when we received the notification from amazon um it, we were ready to publish already and removing the piece would have mean postponing the release of issue due indefinitely because then you change everything it forces us to take content from upcoming issues then you change it changes everything in, 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 especially the balance in terms of what appears in the mag, in the issue and so on and so forth. So we might have had to even postpone and maybe cancel because we might not have been able to replace the amount of content that was available there. So it, it was, um, it was a hard decision for us because we thought, oh, my goodness, we can't be on Amazon. But then when we look at the numbers for us, it doesn't really matter because, as, as I said before, you know, um, readers are really um, are on other platforms. They buy they buy the issues from the other platforms. So it's not a big issue per se, but it's still it's still a, a big problem that could have turned into something uh, much bigger than it was. Uh, but thankfully, uh, we could solve the issue because we were able to publish elsewhere. So it, it's not really uh, a bad thing at the end of the day. But yeah, as, as David said, you know, be very, very careful. If you want to resubmit something, you know, make sure that you remove all trace and meaning 
remove all trace from a blog or website or Facebook because that's what uh, uh, Amazon looks at. The rule is that your content, your work doesn't have to be available widely, meaning Facebook, blog, website, and so on and so forth. If it's published in another magazine that is uh, not available publicly, that people have to purchase to read, then the rule doesn't apply. It just applies for content that is widely available. And as David said, it doesn't matter if it's the New York Times or the smallest blog in the world. Proof is is Amazon find the con found the content uh, mm. and are the tools that we use to check on duplicate content wasn't able to find it. So they have powerful tools that are not available to people like us, unfortunately. So that was an important mention to make. But you can look at what we wrote on the blog so that you get more information about what really happened if you're curious about it. In any case, moving on to our next topic, which is our current submission calls. So we are, always have submission calls going on. Always, always. Uh, we closed our reading period for the magazine because we had so much content that we needed to start focusing and reading so that we could choose the best content for the magazine. But we always have anthologies going on. So as always, the Poart Mo anthology uh, that we started last year for Remember, Poart Mo meaning positive art moves. Um, and, you know, we want pieces as positive pieces, inspirational pieces. It's photography, it's poetry, it's short stories, it's essays, it's paintings, it's drawings. I hope I didn't forget anything. <laughs> so anything positive and inspirational. And this year, what we're trying to do is have two different anthologies. One for adult creatives and one for 13 to 16 year old creatives. So that's what we're doing. Um, and the second anthology, the second submission call is for the No Longer Ignored anthology, uh, which asks the question, what does social justice mean to you? Uh, so this one has a deadline very close now, April 25th. So it's, it's very close. So same thing, you know, any kind of art stories, testimonies, you know, that inspire people to take action. You want, you want to give a voice to someone, you know, has suffered from social injustice. You have suffered for social injustice yourself and you want to share, share that story so that others are inspired to change, are inspired to take action. Uh, so for those uh, submission calls, uh, we want to remind you that we charge a small submission fee, but we also pay ongoing royalties. But this part is just for adult creative. For 13, 16 year olds, we do not charge fees. So we do not pay ongoing royalties because it's a little more complicated with parents because young creatives are required to submit with our parents that's our that's a very important rule that we'd want to stick to so submitting to us if you're a 13 or 16 year old you can submit to us for free just one piece but we're not paying ongoing royalties so the submission fee and the ongoing royalties are for the adults so anyone 17 and older that's what it is um so if you want to submit to us, look at our submission guidelines um, at the link that we uh, that appears on the screen. Uh, just click on the relevant banner uh, to go to the anthology that you want, um, and that's about it. If you're not familiar with a submission process, we ask that you read our FAQ section. Uh, it's very important because we highlight the most important rules, submission rules, everything is there. Um, you know, the submission fees, the royalties, how everything works with us. So if you have a question about the submission process, it is addressed in the FAQ. And then, of course, we have submission, specific submission guidelines for each anthology. 
uh, but the FAQ and the submission guidelines all work together. They are complementary, and uh, we ask that you read them very carefully. We know it's 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 they are very long. You know, we know there's a lot of content, but it's extremely important that you read our submission guidelines because if you look, follow them, the likelihood of your work being accepted is very high. If you don't follow our guidelines, you're not going to be accepted. I can tell you for sure. <laughs> And it's faster and convenient as well because because we've addressed so many different issues. It means that you don't have to uh, email us and uh, try mm -hmm. to get simple answers that you could easily find on the FAQ. You know, usually if you've got a question about something, we guarantee uh, you know that ninety nine percent of uh, your queries or inquiries will actually be uh, answered by the FAQ. It's very very comprehensive. Uh, it only seems big because we've covered every single eventuality because mm -hmm. we've encountered a lot of uh, problems with people. And uh, by that, I mean that they've come along and, and come to, to, with us to questions that needed to be answered. And we thought, well, why not just put that all in one particular area? And mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, as Sandrine said, you know, if you go through it, you, not only are you going to get the answer to your questions, you're also going to be absolutely uh, positively guaranteed to get in your best chance of getting your, your stuff uh, promoted by us. Or, or chosen by us because uh, it shows that you, you've uh, taken the time to uh, look at the rules, look at the guidance. It's all there as guidance. It's not there as waffle. Every single thing that we put there is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And you, and it's also, you can take that information and easily apply it to other uh, journals as well. So by following our guidelines and advice, uh, you're probably going to make yourself a better submitter for other people's mm -hmm. journals as well. So, you know, we're trying to lead by example. And uh, and that's what, why, we, why we created that uh, area for you to take a look at as well. Very well said. <laughs> um, so the next step, the next uh, piece of news is uh, I'm going to talk about it because I'm very, very excited. Um, you know, I'm a minimalist writer. I don't like descriptions. Uh, you know, I can't write a novel or anything, but I love flash fiction. I love, you know, short pieces. And that's why I'm a haiku writer. I love it. So very recently, David and I were talking about me starting to double into flash fiction and short stories and everything. And I quickly realized, oh, no, I, you know, short stories, <laughs> it's too long for me to write too many descriptions. I suck at them. So I wanted to create something that, you know, I could you know, that could challenge me at the same time, play into my my strengths. And I know I'm not the only one not, you know, loving to write descriptions. So I came up with the idea of borrowing from flash fiction, which is a fantastic genre, by the way, um, and, and creating some kind of, as you said, David, poetic prose. So the flash coup borrows from flash fiction, the kind coup, which is one of our poetry forms, and the sisku, which is my poetry form, and a little bit from the haiku um, in terms of the twist and the impactful kind of pieces you want to write with a flash coup. So, you know, the, the rules of the flash coup are extremely simple. I try to keep it, keep them as simple as possible. Um, oh, I made a mistake. It's between 50, 50 and 100 words, not 150. 50 and 100 words uh, with seven words that are taken from another piece. Uh, the credits are mandatory. Uh, and the seven words must be taken from another piece. This rule is specifically the kind coup. Uh, that's why it's a kind coup. Um, the Cisco rule about being inspired by an image, that's a Cisco right here. So the piece is to be very, very short. So between 50 and 100 words, seven words must be taken from another piece and you must use an image. You must not just be inspired by an image, you must use the image in your piece. Uh, so because of the shortening of the, of the piece between 50 and 100 words, the descriptions can only be minimal. I can guarantee you try it. You see, you cannot get into descriptions at all. Uh, and the climax, I said 80% through the piece, but it's really not a, a hard rule. You know, it's just more a, a way to guide you through the writing process. And of course, as for whatever we do with ours and blossoms, which is also the goal uh, for me to release the flash coup is, 
your piece has to be positive or inspirational. There has to be something in the piece, especially at the end, uh, that must be positive and inspirational uh, to make it quite unique. Because you can talk about any experience at all, and it can be the darkest experience. At the end, there must be a twist that makes people think, oh my God, you know, despite that, the person wrote about something so positive. And that's where the haiku comes into play because that's basically what a haiku is. At the end, there is a twist, something that makes you think, oh my God, I was going in this direction. And then the twist is I'm going in another direction. Um, so the flash coup is, is, is really um, something. I love writing flash coup. It's the easiest form uh, genre I've created of them all so it's 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 really a uh, fun fun short literary genre um so if you want to find more information about the flash coup uh plus an example uh you see the link on the screen and my goodness i can type today look at the typos more more info <laughs> about the flash coup so here's the address you can check it out and um yeah, that's it. It's it's very exciting. It's such a fun, um, fun form uh, genre to write. And I'm not saying it because I invented it. I actually have a blast. Um, it requires a little bit of work in the sense that you have to find the seven words that you want to borrow from, and you have to find the image. So there's a little bit of work involved. But when you have found your image and you found your words, things uh, should work out really, really well. I've actually seen uh, your examples, Sandrine, and I really love how um, I believe that the words create what I like to think of as like uh, tent poles or chaps. Because you're working with a very small amount mm -hmm. of words, I think that when you have something like you have a theme, like say the theme is snow or you have a picture of snow, you've really got to think about something that evokes mm -hmm. a mental image to yeah. you and you think, okay, I'll write a piece of writing. But by actually selecting the words... I feel like you're being guided as well so mm -hmm. that you've got those particular words that you've got to incorporate and therefore your sentences are working towards the goal of incorporating those words and therefore you're actually building something and it's actually mm -hmm. giving you clues to work from. I find that when you're trying to write a completely uh, fresh piece, when you've only got a particular theme or a uh, syllable structure or even a kind of idea and saying, oh, it's got to be a positive piece. Mm -hmm. Well, that could mean anything. You know, you can literally write about anything and that's great. But sometimes you might think, oh, it's going to create artist block or writer's block for me mm -hmm. because I can't, if I've got everything to write about, I can't think of some specific thing that is affecting me right now that, um, you know, you might have just ha had, had no kind of sort of inspiration in your life to, at that point to just think, oh, you know, that's that's going to be a trigger point for me to write th mm -hmm. this particular story. Um, but I find that when I've looked at the, how it, your flash queue works, it's just that because you've got those specific words that, you, that you've yeah. got in place um, and then you have to kind of dovetail those words together as well. So that's why I think it works yeah. so very, very well because you've got an image that you can work from and you've got words as well. It's not just one or the other yeah. it's, it's uh, you know a nice combination yeah and, and what i like is that even if you can't provide the images yourself um and and having to look for content you can actually build partnerships with people and ask them you know can i use your image can i use the words from your piece and it's uh yeah and credits are mandatory you have to provide the credits because that's a respectful thing to do anyway but you can actually create uh, partnerships with people and say, oh, you know, that person respects my work, so I'm going to be mentioned in the piece. So it's a way for you to promote others as well, which is something that we love doing at Ours and Blossoms anyway. <laughs> it's important. It's important to support one another as artists. That's that's the way you build, you know, a good audience. You build a good career and so on and so forth. That's what ultimately you'll be remembered as, as someone who likes sharing, promoting others. That's uh, that's the way you're you become successful as an artist. Totally. So we're very excited to announce that the part mo prompt is back many many of you have asked you know you know where's the part mo prompt you know it disappeared we had it for i think it was a uh, six months i think last year or something like that yeah it was about and, that time and, and when we moved it because we we're so busy and we had other projects in mind so on and so forth you know many people 
came to us and said, well, where is it? Are you bringing it back? Blah, blah, blah. And we're like, yeah, we'll see. But then uh, based on popular demand, <laughs> we decided to bring it back. But this time we're bringing it back with a twist. We only accept kind coups, parade coups, six coups, and flash coups. So you have to use our poetry forms and our literary genre, which we just talked about. Uh, we won't accept other genres, other forms. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you can publish your own forms and your own poems and your piece on your blog and so on and so forth, but you cannot, uh, you cannot submit to us. That's what I'm saying. Um, so the first theme, so the the, um, the, 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 um, the the prompt, the series is going to be monthly and not every two weeks. Uh, so for the month of April, uh, the theme is a theme chosen by David, uh, which is newspaper. Uh, so if you want more information about the theme and how to submit to us, uh, you can see the link on the screen here. So. And one thing I will say is that if you do decide to uh, publish your own uh, kind coup, parade coup, sis coup, or flash coup on your own blog, uh, we won't be uh, uh, promoting it because you're doing it outside of what we've asked for. We've asked you to send it to our anthology. So there's no guarantee that you'll get any kind of promotion from us by simply doing it and, and hoping that we will you'll catch our eye because that is very unfair because ultimately we want you to submit to us. We want to be able to sort of judge it uh, ourselves because it's the form that we created. We want to be able to promote it for you. And I would say as a second little notion as well, by publishing it on your blog or Facebook or wherever else you've done it, you've actually gone and gone back to the problem that we spoke about earlier, which was mm -hmm. you've created a widely um, uh, wide audience for people to be able to find your uh, your poem, and therefore you would rule it out from being <laughs> admissible for for our uh, particular anthologies mm -hmm. anyway. So I would strongly uh, ask you to think about how, if you're going to use our to, uh, mm -hmm. our forms to promote yourself, uh, to uh, at least be um, considerate of our kind of sort of time and our effort to create these forms and think about uh, keeping your work unpublished and submit it to our anthologies because that way, you know, because these are very specific forms, it's not like we're asking for a general submission that could be absolutely anything that could be sent that you could churn out to many other journals. We're asking for very specific forms. Now, if you write a kaiku and you write one uh, that follows the rules and you write a good one, then I'd say you're guaranteed to, to be published by us mm -hmm. because uh, you follow the rules, you've um, met the uh, challenges of the form, and mm -hmm. you haven't published it elsewhere, like somewhere silly, like on your blog or on Facebook, which would actually rule it out from uh, being allowed to be published on places like Amazon in, in, in the future, because yeah. that's where we will try to market our future anthologies and things too, as well as all of our major other platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have had a lot of people in the past that did actually do that with our with our prompts, whether it was Poet Mo prompts or other prompts that we did. We mm -hmm. like to be very creative. We like to cr uh, create lots of prompts for people to to work through their artist block or their writer's block. And uh, when people tend to do it independently of us, it's not a very good idea because ultimately you're just going to be promoting yourself and it's not going to get you any extra attention. You will get extra attention uh, if if you go down the submission routes for the anthology, and then you'll then, then you'll have a publishing a potentially a publishing credit if we select it, yep. and uh, you could also be earning royalties as well. You know why would you publish it on your blog and uh, jeopardize yourself in that way because you've made it widely available when you could submit it to us? We could give you a publishing credit and potential royalties. You know if we accept it as well. So mm -hmm. so that's what I just want to stress uh, when you look at these particular forms and you want to create them. Yeah, um, which leads me to talk about um, something that uh, an issue that we have encountered <laughs> quite a lot and that uh, many artists <clears throat> do not seem um, to grasp. They do not understand why we're doing it. We, uh, our stance on simultaneous submissions is simple. Um, we know that some submissions like that are, they are standard practice. Um, in the journal industry, magazine industry. Uh, but Ours and Blossoms um, is not that kind of platform. We do not accept simultaneous submissions. Um, and, and the reason is simple. Simultaneous submissions take a lot of work to review like any other submission. Um, and while we spend time reviewing simultaneous submissions, you know, we cannot spend that time on other things. So the more submissions we receive, the heavier the workload is for us, 
And of course, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's not that big of a deal for us because that's what we signed up for when we decided to have a magazine. That's part of it. But the problem is simultaneous submissions can be withdrawn because people submit to several magazines and journals at the same time. When it's accepted elsewhere and you send us an email saying, you know, my work was accepted elsewhere, remove it from your list, it means that our time was wasted. Um, and an even worse situation is when artists do not respond to our emails and we're in the process of publishing everything, they email us to say, oh, no, no, I want to withdraw my submission because, you know, it was it was accepted elsewhere. I forgot to tell you, blah, blah, blah. Um, so as you can imagine, for us, it means a lot of wasted opportunities, a lot of wasted time that we cannot use for something else, especially reading other fantastic submissions. Um, and it's a lot of added work for us. And that's why we do not accept simultaneous submissions. It doesn't mean that it's a bad practice. It's a standard practice. But for us, it doesn't work because, you know, there are two people here talking to you today. That's the only two people who run ours and Blossoms. And if you follow our blog and if you look at a website, we're a huge platform. We do so many different things. We have the magazine. We have the anthologies. We have the prompts. We create poetry forms. We have guides for authors and artists. You know, we do the show once a month. We interview artists. We do so many things and there's also the marketing part the research connecting with others um updating a social media uh, pages and so on and so forth so unfortunately <laughs> we do not have that much we only have 24 hours in a day like everyone else um so we can't afford to waste that kind of time and as i said simultaneous submissions are not wrong there's nothing wrong with them but for us it doesn't work because you know it's um it takes a lot of time away from what else we could do because we do so many things already so we don't want to run the risk of being overrun and overwhelmed by so many different things we want to focus on really things that can help us create the best platform for artists the best place and and the place that artists are proud to call some kind of a home for their work so that's so that's very important that you understand that we're not against simultaneous submissions we're not against you this is not a personal thing it's just for us we have priorities and there are only two of us we can only do so much and sometimes you know i wish i had three brains to be honest but i just have one i only have two hands and we cannot do everything and we're also a digital content provider. So what that means is that we differentiate from online journals and magazines because they can publish a lot faster and quicker. They mm -hmm. can do a lot more regularly. Um, and they, when they select their, their things, it could be that, for example, that they'll do things monthly because they'll scoop everything up. Uh, they'll take the best of what they, they want. They'll publish it in their online journal and it'll be freely available on the internet. And what we're creating is something, uh, we have a plat our platform is not creating something that's freely available on the internet. So when we publish it's with digital content providers, it's through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple, uh, Kobo, uh, all kinds of sort of people um, where you can buy, uh, you know, Mobby files, EPUB files, whatever the, the file is that you, you like to use on your readers. Uh, ultimately, uh, that's the reason, you know, one, another one of the main reasons why we don't allow simultaneous submissions is because we are creating an actual thing that is being, what I'd say, physically published. It might not be available in print because we feel that print costs drive up the price astronomically by, say, five or ten times the amount, which is why we stick to digital. But just because we're digital doesn't mean we're the same as online journals that publish stuff on their on their websites or other kind of things, because that's the way they get up. They can publish very quickly and therefore simultaneous submissions aren't a problem because uh, the as soon as they publish something, then then you can remove something from submission and go somewhere else. They'll have submission managers. There'll be things like Submittable or you know, Geotrope Submission Manager or some other kind of sort of submission manager where the process can be followed. But with us, when you kind of submit something to us, it's going into an actual, I'd say, an artistic project uh, that could, uh, you know, is ultimately going to be published further down the line in digital format. And therefore, mm -hmm. it's not going to be exclusively available on the internet or the web at all. It's only going to be available through readers, through through the um, actual kind of buying on bookshop platforms. 
Um, and as we say, the only reason we don't do print is simply because of the uh, the cost uh, of shipping as well as, uh, as as creating the thing as well. But um, but that's why that's why we say no simultaneous submissions because it just uh, would get to the point where uh, if something's removed, then you're actually yeah. destroying an artistic project that we're mm -hmm. creating further down the line. Yeah, and um, it wouldn't be so expensive if, if it was just written words. But the thing is, we include visual visual works as well, which makes anything very very expensive um and when you're uh, like us we have tiny budgets and we would have to sell let's be honest here because of the cost involved because you need quality if it's especially visual content you need quality you need the images to be very very good looking uh so you're looking to sell um an issue of a magazine minimum of 25 or 30 dollars per copy for yeah. one issue, uh, for a regular book, a uh, coffee, uh, you, know, you call it a coffee book, coffee table book. Yeah. Thank you. Coffee table book. This is manageable, but for it, for a magazine, when you rely on print on demand, like we would not a regular printer, because then the, the cost would be off the roof. Uh, the only solution for us would be to order hundreds of copies so that it would be more affordable, but, you would never be able to sell hundreds of copies. It's impossible. Talk to any magazine. It won't happen at all. It's impossible, especially for smaller magazines. Um, so, you know, $25 to $30 an issue um, is way too much. No one can afford it. For print it. copies, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for print copies. So that's why we're not even looking into printing copies, even for anthologies. Uh, we were asked that question before, and, you know, there's no way we can do it because no one, especially in this day and age can afford to pay 45 to 50 dollar a copy and and when we're talking about 45 to 50 dollars a copy it's not us making the money right here we would make you know maybe three four dollars max per copy and then because we're paying royalties to authors can you imagine getting 10 cents a copy <laughs> per copy sold so that's why for us it makes more sense to keep everything digital so that we can cut the costs, we can sell the copies for a much cheaper price, and we can still pay artists uh, quite well um, as a result. And you've also kind of brought up another uh, issue in relation to what I like to think about as uh, balance is that if we were a pure poetry journal, which we used to start out with, but now we're art, so we're creative art and, and uh, short stories and, and uh, photos, photos and drawings and things, we have a balance that we have to maintain. Now, if we were a pure poetry uh, publication, we could lose poetry here and there and it wouldn't affect the flow of the publication. But because we uh, are an art, creative art, uh, a creative art literary journal, uh, and and anthologies that we do as well because we've got the kind of variants that we've got there is that when we have uh, if we were to allow simultaneous submissions and say someone pulled out a photo or a story or something like that it could upset the entire balance of the publication you know we might have not have a very good ratio we might have too much poetry uh, compared to the stories or the photos we like to maintain the balance with our projects and that's another very very clear reason why we don't like to uh, allow simultaneous submissions because all you have to do is take away one of those important elements and it could upset set the entire kind of energy that we're creating or the publication that we're creating and so it has a bigger impact so i'd say that even going back to your coffee table book example is if you had a book of 30 photographs but they were all kind of on a similar theme if you lost one or two and then had to replace them it yeah. wouldn't make a difference but it's purely because yeah. we have a mixture of art we don't want to uh mess up the project in terms of the flow that we've created with the submissions that we're, we're using yeah and, and what happens as well you need a proof copy Every time you edit something and you remove no. and add something else, uh, I, I've released three uh, photography books on my own, so I know I can talk about it. It's like uh, I use Blurb, which is absolutely fantastic, but the, the costs to make those books are so high. So every time you want to change something to the book, for you to, to be able to release the book, you actually need to order a proof copy, and it costs. 25 30 plus shipping and handling so it's very yeah. costly it's it's 
it's not it's not worth it as much as i would love to do it because of course when it's visual content it's always better you know as a physical book always always better but we have to be realistic and we have to think of the artist as well we have to be able to sell copies and to make sure that we can pay the artists as well so that's why digital is definitely <laughs> definitely a better option thank god for that option and uh the point you made is is very true too it's like if something changes, it, it creates an imbalance and you replace it with something else. And it, it involves so much work just for one piece. And we saw what was with that piece we we're talking about for issue two, the issue with Amazon. So it created such a hassle for us uh, for an entire day. <laughs> So I, um, I I no longer want to go through that, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I, I will. Hello, Christy. Hello, JD. Thank you uh, for coming, guys, today. So we see the comments that you are leaving on Facebook. Um, yeah, it's, it's, as you said, JD, uh, it's hard to manage costs, really. Um, and, yeah, the ecology is delicate as well which is why digital books are a great option really and uh yeah people are stingy as well and and these days they have good good reasons to be stingy because you know a lot of them are without work or in limited means so we have to make sure that you know they can't still read books <laughs> so that's why you have to make sure that everything uh you release is 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 affordable which reminds me that for issue two, uh, we always run a special, by the way, something we forgot to mention. So uh, thank you, Jamie, <laughs> for that comment, because it transitioned really well into what I wanted to say. Um, so we we used to do pre-orders, but now we've stopped. Uh, during the pre-order period, you used to be able to purchase a copy of the issue or the anthology um, for a reduced price. So a copy of issue to a $6.99, but for the next two weeks from today until, what is it, April 21st, I think, two weeks from now? Naked. Two, uh, 14 days from now, um, you can get a copy for $4.99. Um, so uh, $2 off the copy. Take advantage because- it's I'll take 10. You will find, yeah, take 10. Here you go. <laughs> So, and we've like, got new books as well, haven't we? <laughs> oh yeah, we, we do so much. When we tell you we're busy, when we tell you we are busy, it never stops. We say we've got new books, but mm -hmm. what we mean is that we've always got new books because we've got hundreds of books that we still need to <laughs> go back to because we're releasing them so yeah. quickly we can't promote the previous ones. Yeah, but these are our most recent books, aren't they? We said we always have new books, but these are our most recent publications. Yeah, our most recent books. We uh. David and I are such creative people. And we're not saying that because we want people to say, oh, you're fantastic, you're awesome. It's not that. We are creative. We're always inspired to create things. That's why our partnership is so fantastic because we share common goals and we know we want to create, we want to create, we want to create. Um, so our latest two books, um, our new edition, the latest edition to our series of guides and workbooks for artists. So 30 creative prompts to take your art to the next level. The first book we released, uh, prompt books that we released was quite successful. So people asked us for more prompts. So here they are in this new book. We know and it's per this is perfect for National Poetry Writing Month, which is currently on going at the moment as well. Absolutely. So that's the first book. And the second book that we have, this one is a project released under the Poe Art Mo Collective, uh, which is a collective I created two years ago, almost at the same time as uh, Ores and Blossoms with David. Um, so this one is a three authored book, uh, Seizing the Bygone Light, a tribute to early photography. Uh, so there are three authors involved, myself, 
David and Hadiya Ali, who was a former member of the collective. Uh, and we wanted to pay homage, uh, to pay tribute to the early days of photography. Uh, and at first, you know, the project was kind of, you know, we were wondering how we could make it work. And as always with David, was so creative, so many ideas that we made it work. So each one of us uh, in the book focuses on a specific area. So Hadia chose two of her favorite early photographers, pioneers photography, and she emulates their style, their styles. My second part is uh, the second part, which is my part, is the reminigrams, which is a form of digital photography that I invented years ago uh, and that pays tribute to my love for early photography. And then the third part, I'll let David talk about it because this is a, a jewel to me. That's my favorite part of the book. Yeah, I mean, my contribution, uh, I can't take a photo to save my life, although I hope to someday dabble uh, in it and uh, you know take it on as a new sort of challenge for me. But my part specifically relates to using the Pareku form, uh, which is a form that uh, Sandra and I created, a visual poetry form. And I, for my inspiration, um, you know, we, we use two pictures in every Pareku poem because we're trying to compare uh, two pictures that seem to be unrelated, but you find a link between the two of them. And what I did was I chose a lot of early photography um, from they actually the 1700s, 1800s, many, many years ago. And I used that as my inspiration to write my Pareku poems. And I would take two uh, unkind of sort of associated pictures and then we would find a way to connect them with the words of the poetry. And I did a few of those. Uh, so that was my contribution. So even though I couldn't uh, take pictures myself, unlike uh, Sandrine and uh, Hadia, uh, I um, you know, uh, contrib contributed to the actual uh, project by uh, visually by providing uh, you know some some pictures that I chose, some really kind of sort of interesting, intriguing pictures, and then creating poetry for those pictures to kind of uh, round the whole project off. I think uh, Sandrine has um, lost, uh, uh, is sorting something out at the moment. I don't know. I can't hear at the moment. I think she's uh, sorting something out. Sorry. Uh, there's just, uh, sorry. In the house. I closed the door in my it's room. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it your dogs? Are they making too much noise? Yeah, yeah. They're making too much noise. Yeah, that, that's what it is. So, yeah. So that that's it, I guess. Uh, do people in the comment section uh, have questions? JD, Christy, do you guys have questions for us? Um, no, no questions. That's perfect. <laughs> Those are the kind of questions we like. No, we, we do we do always say that if people want to submit questions to us via our uh, website or uh, if they want to comment on this video after the event, by mm -hmm. all means do so. We will respond. We are very, very responsive people. Yeah. And uh, we will always try and offer advice uh, in relation to whatever question you have uh, for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for us today. Thank you uh, so very much for joining <laughs> us. Yeah. <laughs> we did. We're so much, so many pieces of news to share. That's crazy. Um, we thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you coming. And JD and Christy, thank you very much for stopping by and leaving comments. Uh, we appreciate you as always. Um, so we hope you have a fantastic weekend uh and uh we can't wait to read your reviews and feedback on the issues uh, the issue sorry issue two uh the new books or anything you want and we can't wait to read your pieces inspired by by our new theme for the poet mo prompt uh so once again have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next month bye bye Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Cheers.